These days, it's pretty difficult to find a mountain bike that won't suit your needs. From lightweight trail bikes to big enduro sleds, there's something out there for everyone. But sometimes it actually means it can be pretty difficult to make a choice. So on that note, welcome to a new pink bike series, The Matchup, where we take a look at two different bikes from the same manufacturer and put them head to head based on their ride characteristics, tech and geometry. My name's Aidan Oliver with Pink Bike, and first up is Norco Optic versus the Norco Sight. Norco was first founded in 1964 by a guy called Bert Lewis, who originally set up shop in a converted chicken coop in Burnaby, BC. The brand was originally called Northern Cycles Industry, but they quickly changed their name to Norco in 1968 when the brand realized that their name wouldn't actually fit on a down tube or the head tube of a bike. Norco became synonymous with the emerging free ride scene on Vancouver's North Shore, and they released legendary bikes such as the A-Line, VPS1, and these were being hucked off stupidly high skinnies by the cycling world's new cool kids. Fast forward to 2020, and Norco still manufacture a huge range of mountain bikes for all disciplines, from XC to downhill, and these can still be hooked off skinnies, if that's your thing. So here's the Norco Sight. First released back in 2012, it was a 26 inch all mountain bike. Shout out to 26 inch wheels, RIP. But since then, enduro racing has gained popularity, wheels have gotten bigger, and the all mountain bike has changed a lot. Version 4.0 of the Sight is Norco's new take on the all mountain bike. It comes with either 29 or 27.5 inch wheels. The fork has been bumped up to 160. The rear travel has been bumped up to 150. This site here has been built using Norco's build your ride program, which lets you pick all your different components. This one has RockShox Lyric Ultimate Fork, a RockShox Super Deluxe Shock, SRAM Code RSC brakes, and SRAM's X01 Eagle drivetrain. The site comes with a carbon front end, carbon seat stays, and aluminum chain stays, and there are also full alloy options available as well. Prices range from 2800 to 7100, and if you want the frame and shock, it'll be 3049, and this size large build comes in at 32 pounds. The Optic was first released back in 2016 as an XC bike and remained largely unchanged for a number of years. But for 2020, the Optic only keeps its name as it's had a complete redesign. With geometry you would usually see on a bike with much longer travel and the spec to match, it's actually pretty difficult to work out what this bike even is. But luckily, Mike Levy isn't here, so we don't have to call that downcountry bike. With 125 millimeters of rear travel, 29 inch wheels, and 140 millimeter fork, the Optic is Norco's take on short travel, but big fun. The bike focuses on attacking the trail, hitting lips, and is generally shredding. This optic model here is a C2 spec, which comes with a RockShox Pike Select Plus fork, SRAM's GX Eagle drivetrain, Shimano full piston brakes, and interestingly, every single optic model comes stocked with a RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate D8 shock, which has a custom tune made for aggressive riding. The optic comes with a carbon front end and an aluminum rear triangle. Prices range from $3,749 to $9,000 for the Baller Axis build. If you want just the frame and shock, it'll be $2,500. And this build here in a large comes in at £30, which is £2 lighter than the site. Both the optic and the site's geometry stems from Norco's Ride Align program. And what this means in a nutshell is that each different size of bike gets its own unique geometry, with the rear end of the bike growing as the front end does. Norco's goal with this was to always make sure that the rider's center of gravity is balanced within the bike. It might seem like a no-brainer, but it's actually going against the norm for the majority of bikes. So when we put these bikes side by side, we start to see some crucial differences. When looking at head angles, the site has a 64, whereas the optic has a 65. On these size larges, the site has a 440 millimeter chainstays, whereas the optic has 435 millimeter chainstays. When looking at the reach, the site is 485, whereas the optic is 480. This extra 24 millimeters is intended to give the site a more planted feel on the trail, whereas the optic is a touch shorter and designed to be a little more lively. So you've heard enough of me rattling off numbers. These bikes have similar geometries and similar components, but what kind of riding actually suits them best? Although the angles on the optic are similar to the site and are intended to let you ride the bike aggressively, it does only have 125 millimeters of travel and riders will have to keep that in mind. Norco haven't forgotten about the climbs as they've given the optic a steep seat tube angle and kept things relatively lightweight. If you're the type of rider who does a lot of climbing and rides some flow trails, but you occasionally want to hang out with Enduro Mates too, you could be the type of rider Norco designed the Optic for. If you're the type of rider who rides rough, technical, and steep trails, but also occasionally wants to ride some more mellow trails, an all-mountain bike like the Sight is a great one to consider. 
Norco labeled the site as a true all mountain bike, which is a category that's kind of been overtaken by enduro bikes, but this is a perfect example of why it's a category that should never die out. So there you have it, the Norco site put head to head against the Norco Optic. Let us know in the comments which one was your favorite and let us know which two bikes you want us to put head to head next time.